There are times when things do not go as planned, and this is exactly what happened with some nuclear tests. At that time, all that stood between humanity and nuclear destruction was the flip of a switch, which is exactly not what you want when explosives are involved. Here are some of the experiments that went wrong. Let us start our video with the most famous Soviet Union's Tsar Bomba, which has been the largest and most powerful bomb ever constructed. It had a yield of 50 megatons, or the firepower of about 3,800 Hiroshima bombs, detonated simultaneously and was launched over Novaya Zemlya Island in the Russian Arctic Sea. Despite the fact that the bomb's destruction was significantly more than anticipated, it was detonated 4,000 feet above ground level. The shock raid exploded three times in the air, causing havoc in the area. It generates 1,500 times the energy of the Hiroshima bombing coupled with all the chemical weapons used in World War II. Moving on, Storax Sedan comes next. A shallow underground nuclear test that took place at the Nevada National Security Site. The blast produced a radioactive cloud that split into two plumes. The two plumes followed approximately parallel routes to the Atlantic Ocean, heading northeast and then east. Radioactivity was found in eight counties in Iowa. The entire consequences of the sedan shot were assessed and it was discovered that the radioactive fallout from such uses would be significant. The plan was finally abandoned because of public worries about the health impacts and a lack of governmental support. The next on our list is the Starfish Prime. When it comes to the most extensive test ever undertaken in outer space, the Starfish Prime comes out on top. It is one of the five of its sort that has been executed. The results were intended to intimidate the Soviet Union and explode bombs in outer space, but the results were disastrous. The loss was far more anticipated than the calculation when the missile detonated in the sky and a backside of unplanned magnetic impulses hit the Earth. Nuclear fallout simply and literally means 1,032 mysterious and strange nuclear weapon tests that America conducted on its own soil. Between 1951 and 1973, between 340,000 and 690,000 Americans died as a result of nuclear fallout in their own nation, according to estimates. Thousands of employees were exposed to high levels of fallout. Thousands were killed and even tiny doses caused cancer. The US killed more of its own citizens to develop these weapons. It's very possible that millions of individuals were exposed to the fallout and now suffer from ailments related to that exposure. Everyone knows about the two bombs that were dropped on Nagasaki, but few people know that a third was on its way. An atomic bomb's massive damage and power spurred world superpowers into a nuclear research frenzy, but little did they know that a third was on the way as well. The Demon Corps was not kind to the nuclear physicists involved, as one might expect given its ominous title. It had little margin before increasing radioactivity and becoming supercritical, as it was designed as a bomb core. However, the Demon Corps was not yet complete. Despite a review of safety measures, any modifications made were insufficient to prevent another disaster the following year. They believe that if you dump the bomb out of the bomb bay, you must have planned it. On a normal flight over Goldsboro, North Carolina, a B-52 bomber carrying two deadly hydrogen bombs took off. During the operation, the plane developed a fuel leak, and the B-52 began to crumble in mid-flight. When the aircraft carrying two nukes on its route to enemy territory ran out of fuel, they dropped them on the homeland in an attempt to regain control five men were able to successfully eject out of the plane and land safely. Two people died in the crash. And another pilot ejected but did not survive the landing. On a very normal day, the active reactors at the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant detected the earthquake on March 11, 2011, and automatically shut down their power-generating fission reactions. When the electricity supply failed, the diesel generator kicked in. The earthquake's strength also had created an unimaginable 46-foot-high tsunami. 
Within an hour, the power station suffered three nuclear meltdowns, three hydrogen explosions, and the discharge of radioactive contamination into the atmosphere after a storm swept over the seawall and inundated the reactors, shutting down the generators completely. The Japanese authorities acted quickly, evacuating residents within a 12-mile radius and attempting to contain the situation. The Chernobyl disaster happened on April 26, 1986 at the number 4 reactor in the Ukrainian Soviet Socialist Republic. In terms of time and cost and families, it is the greatest nuclear disaster ever. The accident occurred during a steam turbine safety test. The power output unexpectedly decreased to near zero during a scheduled reduction of reactor power in preparation for the test. The operators were unable to restore the test program's power level, causing the reactor to become unstable. Instead of shutting down, an uncontrollable nuclear chain reaction started, unleashing massive amounts of energy, leading to a massive nuclear destruction. In the 1950s, five men did just that, I mean just stood under the nuke. There was a lot of fear about nuclear-armed Soviet bombers at the time, so the Genie rocket was invented. It was fired from either Canadian or American fighter jets and didn't have a guidance system. Instead, it simply had to be aimed at a Soviet bomber, and the 1.7 kiloton nuclear warhead would ensure it reached its target. Fortunately, it was only used once in a test and that was bad enough. In 1957, a Northrop F-89 Scorpion aircraft flew over the Nevada test site in Area 10 at an altitude of 18,400 feet. After traveling approximately 2.6 kilometers, the Genie was launched and detonated in mid-air. As we are going on and on about nuclear tests, we are generous enough to talk about this one too, the underwater bomb testing that was conducted in America. As tsunamis have recently reminded us of their devastating destructive potential, as seen in Japan and the Philippines, is it any surprise then that military planners once considered developing a tsunami bomb? Setting off the explosion underwater obscured the blast's blinding glare, allowing photographers to get a better view of the event. Wahoo! The following test produced a spray dome that reached 900 feet above the water surfaces, according to Wahoo. Although test number 219 is one of the largest nuclear bombs ever dropped, it is also one of the most intriguing, as this was potentially large enough to incinerate everything within a 9 and a quarter square kilometer radius of the drop location. As a result, while the bomb was undoubtedly massive, the mushroom cloud would have to remain in your imagination until Russia decides to release photos of videos of the explosion one day. And now, let us move on to our subscriber pick of the day. This image was sent to us by a subscriber. Similarly, if you ever wish to know more about an image you come across, just send it to us. Who knows, we might even feature it in one of our videos. This photograph dates from July 18, 1947 when the United States and the United Nations reached an agreement to oversee Micronesia's islands as the trust area of the Pacific Islands, a strategic trusteeship territory. This is the first such trusteeship ever granted by the UN in the Pacific, and many of the properties were quite profitable. The bomb was dropped more than 900 feet into a hole little over 7 feet in diameter, and it took only 3 minutes for anyone to notice that something had gone horribly wrong about 300 feet distant from the hole where the bomb was put. A split in the ground opened up, wide enough for a cloud of radioactive vapor and dust to begin pouring into the sky. Government officials were forced to evacuate the test site immediately, but when dealing with a nuclear bomb, speed is of the essence. Hundreds of them were exposed to radiation, but for the most part, their exposure stayed within established safety limits. Two men were exposed to the highest levels of radiation later developed leukemia and died. New rules were enacted regarding the investigation of the geology of potential test sites before moving forward, as well as new rules to limit workers' potential exposure. Thank you very much for watching the video. Do like and share with your friends, subscribe to the channel, and hit the bell icon to not miss any of the upcoming amazing videos.